Hello and welcome back to the Buckle Up channel. My name is Rob Wilson and this is the Honda Civic Type R. Right, let's start at the front then and straight away on the bonnet, air scoop. All of these bits and bobs on the car, the vents, they are all functional. The styling depending on who you ask, is either brilliant or terrible. I'm in the middle field. Um, I would probably prefer something a little bit more subtle, but that's just because I'm a boring person. The vent on the top there goes straight into the engine, helps cool uh, it down. That is functional. Moving down, vents, that one feeds directly to cool the turbo, radiator and intercooler right at the bottom down there. There's ones down the side as well these ones here which actually feed through the arches i can actually get my fingers through down the side and then go over the wheel we'll come down to that more in a second obviously you've got a big carbon effect splitter i don't believe it's actually carbon fiber it's also got a flat floor which will stick a camera underneath which obviously massively improves the uh, aerodynamics uh, of the vehicle helps it going to its very high top speed which we'll come to later on we'll move down the side now we've got some very big 245 20 inch wheels and they're only 30 profile it's so thin the tires they're basically painted on we've got some nice big brembo vented discs and those air channels come along here some parts of it will help cool the brakes the other part goes down around the outside of the wheel and it actually comes through this vent here We'll travel all the way along the side of the car until we get to the uh, fancy aero bits at the back. While we're up here, vortex generators. That's far too technical for me. And that obviously helps the airflow onto, um, in case you missed it, this uh, enormous rear wing, which is actually functional and provides uh, negative lift, as Honda call it. I would call that downforce, but it's the only car in its class um, to do that, which shows its sporting credentials. So at the back, we've got two tiered spoiler. We've got Type R badges. These vents here aren't actually vents, but they match the styling at the front. So I'm not too bothered about that. Um, another sort of diffuser at the back with the carbon effect on it and three exhausts. I've now, um, that look a bit like the ones on a Ferrari F40. So either the designer was a big fan of that or the actual reasoning is that the middle one helps um, with the noise at lower rpm and lower speeds makes it sound a bit more meaty and then at higher speeds because of complaints that honda owners had on the fk2 it actually sucks in air um, at high speeds to reduce the booming noise um, that a lot of owners said was happening at high speeds in the old car so it makes it more dailyable so while we're at the back we'll open up the boot and we find that it's actually quite big, um, a lot bigger than I was expecting. I guess that's because, although this is technically a hot hatch, it's more saloon in its profile, and that's because Harry very kindly pointed out that this was the first Civic design for both the European and American markets at the same time, which is probably why the boot seems so much bigger compared to, uh, to rivals. Um, under the boot floor, which moves up like that, the wood uh, be space for a spare wheel but obviously to say I don't think you could fit a, a 20 inch wheel in there to be fair um, but um, you've got your t inflator and um, tyre foam if you get a puncture oh this is honestly incredible Honda thought no parcel shelves have been done wrong for the last 70 years so this one goes horizontally <laughs> rather than like all other parcel shelves. I think that's quite good. I don't know why more cars don't have that because that's way easier than having a massive cumbersome thing to try and lift out all the Tell time. Tell us how easy it is to take out, Rob. Well, uh, there's a button like that. I, I'm impressed that I managed to do that. I think Harry is as well because I think he was expecting me to spend 20 minutes trying to get that out. And it just clips back in. That's, I'm well impressed with that actually. Anyway, let's move into the back seats. So here we are in the back seats and I have to say, I'm rather impressed. I'm six foot two for reference and I was worried about the sloping nature of the design, but 
I think Honda have put some little cutouts into the roof. So even when I sit up, my head is touching, but it would be in a Golf or an Astra or a Focus. I think it's actually slightly better than a Golf. And I've sat in the back of quite a few of them. Um, knee room, that seat's um, nearly as far back as it'll go. And I've still got enough room for uh, my legs. So I can slouch a little bit. There isn't any climate controls or vents that come into the back but I do like the, uh, the the fact that the red stitching and details and the red seat belts make their way into the back as well because normally on sporty cars everything's in the front nothing's in the back but very impressed more dailyable and usable than I was expecting so we're in the front now and you better like red <laughs> nice red seat and actually they're unbelievably comfortable the bolsters are nice keep you in place. Steering wheel's got nice red accents, obviously it all matches with the uh, Type R red Honda badges. You've got your central screen, which has got your Bluetooth and all that sort of rubbish that no one really cares about because... Does it have Apple CarPlay? It has Apple CarPlay, um, so you can connect your phone up and use the, the maps through there anyway, so don't need to worry about any of that stuff. You've got your climate functions and the climate controls actually have buttons, which is good. So you don't have to press things and go into a sub menu and then another sub menu to be able to do anything. There are haptic buttons on the screen, which the volume button is haptic, but you've got one on the steering wheel. So you're just not going to bother using that one. Things are like wireless charging. That's quite a nice feature to have in a car. It makes it more usable every day. You've got your nice metallic gear knob here. Um, which it will be freezing cold on a cold day or too hot to touch on a hot day. Then further down, you've got your drive modes. So you, it automatically defaults to sport when you start it up, which is good. I like that. Um, you can put it into uh, R-type, R-plus, whatever, sporty race track mode and comfort mode. And I have to say, I was surprised at how good the dampers were in comfort. Um, but we'll come to that a bit later on as well. On the steering wheel, you've got all your controls and you can fiddle around with the digital screen in the middle there. You've got your like lane keep assist and all that sort of safety stuff as well, which is quite good. It's got an electronic handbrake, which mm, I prefer to having a proper manual one, uh, like on the GI Yaris, for example, and which is probably a quite close rival of one of these. So that's personal preference, I guess. So cubby spaces up front so we've got a, a glove box down here which has got an enormous owner's manual in it but it's quite a decent size actually um, in the center you have this little device which moves backwards you've got two cup holders in there you can actually remove one here and put that in another place if you wanted to uh, and this actually opens up revealing quite a sizable bin there it goes halfway up my arm and there is a USB in there if you want to charge anything while you're on the go. There's the big space under the centre console, which has got an actual 12 volt uh, socket. And it's got a HDMI and another USB uh, port. So you can charge, I think, one, two, three, four different devices in here at the same time, which is very good. So I've I've just been told that this HDMI port, you can actually plug an Xbox or a PlayStation into it and play it through the screen, just in case you want to. I mean, this car's basically just a giant PlayStation anyway, isn't it? But um, it's like Gran Turismo brought to life. Should we, should we go for a... Actually, no. What we'll do is we'll open the bonnet and we'll have a look at the engine first. Then we'll go for a drive. So we moved under the bonnet where we find a two litre inline four turbocharged Earth Dreams technology, which I think is Honda's way of trying to tell you that this engine is green somehow. But it's got a more important badge on it just there, which says VTEC. And I have no idea how that works. So what I'm going to do now is pass you over to my resident car ball friend, Harry King. So basically the way VTEC works is you have cam profiles in an engine for the intake and the exhaust. And on this one, it's on the exhaust because it's a it's a VTEC turbo. So it's sort of backwards to a normal VTEC system. And basically at lower RPMs, it changes the cam profile in order to create a shorter opening to make the turbo spool faster. I think that's about as simple as I can make it. Thank you. And then at higher RPMs, it, it, it changes the 
the cam profile. So it should give you better turbo response all the way through the rev range in the engine, which I'm sure you'll be able to assess in your driving segment. So it does, it does that. Right, let's drive it. <laughs> So, what's it like out on the open road then? Well, in a word, fast. I can't get over how this VTEC turbocharged engine just delivers its power. Above 2000 RPM, it's just an absolute rocket. So let's talk about some of the stats then. 0 to 60, 5.7 seconds. Horsepower, 316. Torque, 400 Newton meters. Top speed, 169 miles an hour and it sends all that power to the front wheels 316 horsepower to the front wheels there's no four-wheel drive system like on a golf r or a focus rs so honda being the geniuses that they are have fitted a very clever limited slip diff which i cannot explain to you um because I do not have the intelligence to be able to do that. But what I can tell you is that whereas in old Focus RSs, you used to get torque steer in this, nothing. When you put your foot down, it stays absolutely true. It's really quite remarkable this limited slip diff. It also helps in the corners as well, sending power to whichever wheel has the most grip and can pull you out of corners by sending power to outside wheels. And that's not the only thing Honda have done to help with the handling. The old FK2, which this replaces, used to have a torsion beam at the back, which meant you got quite a lot of understeer, if we're honest. But now we've got McPherson struts at the front and multi-link independent rear suspension at the back. So it's a huge improvement over the FK2. Honda have also uh, put the car on a diet. This car weighs only 1,380 kilograms, which is about a person less than a Golf R and two people less than a Focus RS. I love, love the gearbox. It's a six speed manual and that's the only option. No DSGs or flappy paddles to be had here. I don't know what it is about Honda, but they just know how to make a manual gearbox. The throws are so short, it feels so precise, and it's notchy, but in a good way. It's also got a feature that will blip the throttle for you when you change down, as I just did there and there. It saves you having to heel and toe all the time, which is useful. You can turn it off if you that's what you prefer but it makes it a more pleasurable driving experience with less effort. I'm going to change down, we're doing 20 miles an hour, and I'm going to put my foot down, feel the power. Ready? Oh! Oh my goodness me. In fact, that's so good, I'm going to do it again. Oh! All the way up to 7,000 RPM in a turbocharged engine. Normally turbos, they don't go past six, six and a half thousand, but Honda have managed to keep some of that VTEC enjoyment from the old Civic Type Rs back in the day. I mean, it's not an eight or nine thousand screamer, but for a modern engine, that's quite remarkable. So I guess we should talk about some more practical stuff. How comfortable is it? Well, I have to say, a lot more than I was expecting. You can flick between Sport, R+, which is your, basically your track mode, and you can also go into Comfort. And when you're in Comfort, the dampers just soften off. 
the throttle response is obviously less the steering isn't as weighted but you could quite happily sit back relax drive hours in this on the motorway and you you wouldn't have a bad back especially because these seats are so comfortable i'm sitting now at the national speed limit in top gear and i'm doing around two and a half thousand rpm there's no real droning going on the most noise i feel is coming from the tires but that's understandable it's a performance car it's got quite wide tires on it but it's not so loud that you couldn't you know do a long drive in it it's definitely dailyable i'm just going over some bumps there that suspension is really compliant it's completely transformed the car actually from when it was in sport mode you can really feel how comfortable it is the only downside that I've managed to come across so far is the noise. While it's not a, a bad noise in any way, it's just a lot more muted than I was expecting. I think they've taken on the feedback from previous owners of the older models. Yes, it's less droney at higher speeds, but I don't know if that's dialed it down maybe just a little bit too much. I suppose there's plenty of aftermarket options if you want to make it even more boy racery than its looks suggest now. The steering feel is incredible. There's no, you don't feel like you're missing out on anything by it just being front wheel drive. I've driven Golf R's and this feels considerably more engaged than one of them. What happens if we put it into uh, R plus mode? Oh, the steering is way, way heavier. I think in R plus mode, it's it's more set up for track use. Unfortunately, Buckle Up still doesn't have the budget for a track, unless anyone wants to lend us one. The throttle response in R plus mode is unbelievably quick the brakes are good as well actually nice progressive feel it's not bitey like i've experienced in some other cars i've now come onto a much rougher road surface and i'm keeping it in r plus mode and it is bouncy <laughs> but you're not going to have it in that most of the time it's going to be in comfort so let's switch back into that and instantly the car is so much more compliant. I don't feel like I'm being bounced about getting the wind knocked out of me like I was in R plus mode. This is definitely way more dailyable than I was expecting. I have to be totally honest, I wasn't expecting to like this car. I thought it was gonna to be too harsh, too noisy to live with every day. And I didn't think that the limited slip diff would be this good. It's completely changed my perspective on the Type R. So we're at some traffic lights now, so I'll talk about the visibility. Door mirrors are nice and big, so you can you do get a quite a good view actually behind you from there, which is good because the rear view mirror, because it's got that two-tier spoiler, it does go across the middle, but to be fair, it doesn't block it that much. Looking over my shoulder, yeah, it's quite decent visibility. I don't think I'd have any problems on a motorway. At the end of the day, it is a Civic, so it's it's got all the practicalities of a Civic, it's just got the uh, enormous spoilers and vents and air scoops. The visibility out the front is great actually, uh, you, you do get the little power bulge with the air scoop on it in the middle which you can see, which I quite like. me that's quite addictive <laughs> oh I wasn't I was just not expecting to smile this much while driving this car this is by far and away the best front-wheel drive car I've driven through the twisties now there's just no hint of understeer at all you can put your foot down reasonably far before it it starts to panic. I can't get over this. I have a confession to make. I bloody love this car. Jesus Christ. Oof. Oh, Jesus. I 
think it might be worth finding somewhere to pull over so we can do a bit of concluding. Right then, the Civic Type R. What do I think? I, I, I like this car. <laughs> I like this car a lot. It's completely changed my perspective of what a Civic Type R was. I haven't been in one since I was a very small child and that was a, I think it was an, is it an EP3? The, the old hatchbacky one? Yeah, and this is just a completely different and I love it. Um, so I guess the, the thing you've got to think about is if you're okay with the styling, which I know some people are and some people aren't, there's absolutely no reason not to buy one of these. And even if you're a bit iffy on the styling, drive one first because it'll probably win you over. To compare it to something like a Toyota GR Yaris. I haven't driven one of those yet, but hopefully in the near future I'll be able to do that. Compared to its other more German rivals like the Golf R, if you absolutely need four-wheel drive, then get a Golf R. If you don't, and why would you? Because it doesn't really snow all that often. This is perfectly acceptable. It's way more dailyable than I was expecting. The Golf R has got this sort of reputation of being the all rounds, it can do everything. Why can't this? I just think it's because people are put off by the styling that they just think, oh, it'll just be a handful and all this sort of stuff. It's not, it's not all. Please go and drive one. <laughs> and if you've got the money, buy one. Um, I definitely recommend one. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. If you want to follow us on social media, you can do so on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Drive Tribe. We've got a Patreon account if you fancy giving us some money. And uh, we also have merch, which is on screen now somewhere doing a thing. So buy some of that if you're interested. Au revoir.